Welcome to Medical Frontiers. What do you think this image represents? It's actually a high precision, high definition image of the breast and it's the latest medical technology being used here to help detect breast cancer in its very early stages. In Japan, steps are being taken in response to women's wishes to preserve their breasts even after they've been diagnosed with cancer. And medical exams using advanced technologies as well as treatments that don't alter the breasts in any way have been developed. Japan is a world leader in cutting-edge medical technology and healthcare services. Join us as we explore Medical Frontiers. A surgical method for treating breast cancer developed in Japan replaces a scalpel with this needle. The procedure takes only about an hour and leaves minimal scarring. I was incredibly surprised. I thought my breast is completely unchanged. An innovative method for detecting breast cancer shows malignant tumors in vivid colors, making them easy to spot. And we'll share easy recipes for miso soup. This traditional Japanese dish shows promise in preventing breast cancer. Two years ago, when Jun Abe was 45, she was diagnosed with early stage cancer in her right breast. She felt extremely anxious. She worried she'd have to have a mastectomy and thought about how surgery would impact her family. Breasts are among the most feminine of body parts. I felt sad at the thought of losing mine. Also, my family would have been worried if I had had to stay in the hospital for a while. I didn't want to be away from home if possible. Abe's tumor was 12 millimeters across. That made it small enough to treat with breast-conserving surgery rather than complete removal. Until recently, any type of surgery required the partial removal of breast tissue, leading to scars or deformities. For many women, the results are hard to accept. Researchers in Japan have developed a new treatment that can help ease patients' minds. Eisuke Fukuma is a specialist in treating breast cancer. For 30 years, he has studied ways to make breast cancer surgery less invasive. There's no need to remove skin or make large incisions if the cancer is detected in the early stages. That can spare the patients from feeling embarrassed at a hot spring bath, for example. That's the aim of this treatment. Fukuma developed a surgical procedure that uses a needle about three millimeters in diameter. In cases involving a small tumor, only a small scar remains. Fukuma demonstrated his technique using props. Liquid nitrogen is cooled to minus 170 degrees Celsius and delivered through the needle to freeze and kill cancerous cells. The tissue around the tip turns white when it's frozen. The procedure is called cryotherapy. In 2006, Fukuma pioneered its use in breast cancer treatment. This is how cryotherapy quickly eliminates cancerous cells. When the liquid nitrogen is injected, it turns fluid inside the cancerous cells and the surrounding tissue into small crystals of ice. As they grow in number, 
they break through the cell's membrane. At the same time, a sudden change in osmotic pressure occurs by repeating the process of freezing and defrosting twice, completely destroying the membrane and killing the cancerous cells. He freezes not only the cancerous tissue, but also a surrounding section about one centimeter thick. This is to kill any malignant cells that have become scattered, as well as blood vessels that deliver nutrients to the tumor. Abe opted to undergo cryotherapy in January of last year. We recorded the same procedure performed this year on another patient. First, a special device delivered liquid nitrogen to the tip of the needle to cool it. The surgery began at 2.40 p.m. Fukuma applied local anesthesia. Then, he began maneuvering the needle toward the cancerous lesion while using ultrasound to track its location. Once the needle pricks the tumor, Fukuma begins freezing it. He measures the frozen tissue shown in black. The needle is left inserted for about 20 minutes. During this time, Fukuma repeats the process of freezing and defrosting two times. There's just one incision, the same width as the needle. It can be closed with a single stitch. The surgery usually ends in one hour. Because the procedure is done under local anesthesia, it's less taxing on patients. Like most patients, Abe was back on her feet immediately and went home the same day. I made breakfast and sent off my husband and children as usual. Then I took a train to the hospital. After the surgery, I came home by myself. In fact, I bought cake for my family on the way back. It felt like a regular outing, except I got home a bit later. This image taken before the surgery clearly shows Abe's cancer, which appears as a white mass. After the surgery, it's gone, and the shape of the breast is little changed. The section that had been frozen felt a bit hard immediately after the procedure, but that gradually disappeared. I was incredibly surprised. I thought, my breast is completely unchanged. Abe also underwent radiation therapy to prevent a recurrence. One and a half years on, she says she's leading life as she did before. The damage from the surgery was so minor that I could go back to my normal routine in no time. In fact, my younger child doesn't even know I had breast cancer. Fukuma has performed cryotherapy on about 250 patients. The rate of recurrence within five years is one and a half percent. That's about half the rate observed in patients who have conventional breast conserving surgery. The new treatment is giving hope to women with breast cancer. Dr. Fukuma, it's a great pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you so much for your time. And Dr. Fukuma, it's amazing to see that this can be performed without any scars um, and without any leaving any sort of deformity as well. What actually motivated you to develop this treatment? Breast cancer is the most common cancer among women. 
I believe that patients shouldn't feel burdened by the disease. I want them to be able to remain upbeat. Also, many patients are in their 40s or 50s when they have an especially important role to play, both at work and home. I don't want them to be forced to slow down and become less active because of breast cancer. What conditions need to be met mm. for the cryotherapy? The cancer should be small. To be more specific, it shouldn't be larger than 15 millimeters. Also, it's better when it's luminal A cancer, which tends to grow slowly. In fact, 50% of patients with breast cancer have that type. Also, the cancer shouldn't have spread to the lymph nodes. And Dr. Fuga, what are some of the burdens of treatment in terms of, for example, the cost for the patient? Is it covered by health insurance in Japan? Currently, it's not covered by Japanese health insurance. But it costs under 3,500 US dollars, even when all fees are included. And Doctor, are there any side effects or risks with cryotherapy? No complications have been reported so far. Given that the procedure involves freezing, the most probable complication is frostbite, but none of our patients have experienced that. We can prevent it by making sure ice doesn't come into contact with the skin. During surgery, to fill the gap between the cancerous tissue and the skin, Fukuma uses a physiological saline solution. This prevents frostbite by keeping the supercooled materials from touching any skin. How many places can you have it done in Japan at the moment? There are currently only two other places in Japan where you can have it done. But four or five hospitals are thinking about offering it. Why isn't it more widely available in Japan mm. and also around the world? We need to verify that the procedure can be performed safely. At our facility, it has been proven safe when the tumor is 15 millimeters or smaller. But tests should be conducted to see if the same thing can be said at other facilities. We always need to make sure nothing unforeseen happens. We have to carry out many tests until that's proven. Precise maneuvering of the needle is the key to cryotherapy, so doctors have to train to acquire the skill. The most important thing is to practice guiding the needle to the target area while checking the location using ultrasound. Thank you so much for your time today. Doctors in Japan have also developed new technology to detect breast cancer without discomfort. Hi, konnichiwa. Ah, konnichiwa. Hi. It's a great pleasure to have you on the program. Thank Hi. you so much for your time today. A. Ueno is Japan's leading expert on breast cancer diagnosis. He developed elastography, a highly accurate imaging technology for detecting breast cancer. Can I have a look at the ultrasound Hi. machine? Hi. I understand it's a little bit special. Hi. So this is the same image, conventional Hi. ultrasound Hi. elastography. Hi. Hi. So are we looking at the tumor here in blue? Yes, Hi. it has turned deep blue. So I can say with certainty that it is cancer. Elastography displays tumors in color-coded images. Ueno used this approach to address shortcomings in conventional diagnostic technologies. Mammography, the world's most widely used detection method, relies on x-rays for breast imaging. In the images, fat appears transparent, while mammary glands and cancer appear white the image on the left is of a dense breast with a high density of mammary glands. Because there is a lot of white, diagnosis is difficult. Many women in Asia in particular have this condition. 
That's why in Japan, diagnosis using ultrasound has advanced. In ultrasound images, mammary glands are white and cancer appears black. That enables doctors to detect malignant tumors regardless of breast density. But using ultrasound has at least one drawback. A proper diagnosis depends on the doctor's skill. Ueno came up with a new approach by drawing on an old one, the palpation technique, which focuses on judging the hardness of breast tissue. His idea was to use ultrasound to measure hardness and detect cancer. That was the beginning of elastography. It displays variations in breast tissue in vivid colors. Softer areas appear red, while hard areas appear dark blue. This makes it easy to spot lumps. Cancer and a benign tumor are shown here in conventional ultrasound images. Both are black. Sometimes that makes it difficult to distinguish between them. But in elastography, hard cancerous tissue is a distinct deep blue. This makes it easier to tell malignant and benign tumors apart. Elastography has been shown to improve the accuracy of diagnoses. At one facility that introduced the technology, the number of suspected cases declined, while the rate of definitive cancer diagnoses has nearly doubled. The technology can help save both patients and medical facilities time and money and give women more peace of mind. I saw the elastography images on the monitor with my doctor. He told me that the suspected cancer showed up in deep blue. That was when it hit me for the first time that I had cancer. Seeing it with my own eyes made it easier for me to accept the diagnosis and move forward. Early detection gives patients time to choose the best possible treatment and helps prevent a deterioration in their quality of life. Dr. Winner, how do you think this elastography is actually helping the quality of life for women? The best news is that the earlier breast cancer is detected, the higher the chance of overcoming it. Also, with some types of cancer, removing the tumor before it becomes large makes it possible to treat the cancer without removing the whole breast. How much would it cost for me to have it done? We charge about $90. The risk of developing breast cancer increases when you pass the age of 35. So I believe all women older than 35 should get an annual ultrasound examination. Particularly for women who are breastfeeding, I recommend ultrasound because it's hard to detect cancer through mammography during breastfeeding. So, Dr. Weno, I mean, obviously, mammograms aren't mm. fun. They're mm. painful. Mm. Would you still recommend that women have them? To tell the truth, there is a type of breast cancer that can be found only through mammograms. It's an early stage cancer with microcalcifications in the milk ducts. Such tumors are hard to detect with ultrasound. Mammography is unrivaled in finding such cancer, so I recommend receiving both screenings for women over 40 years of age. Dr. Wendell, thank you so much for your time. It really offers, I think, so much hope for women, and it's a great advance as well, so thank you so much for today. Treatments that fully preserve the breasts are providing hope, and it's a huge advance for women.
But to make this treatment available on a global scale, both studies on its safety along with training doctors is absolutely necessary. A traditional Japanese dish known as miso soup is attracting a huge amount of attention for its possibility to prevent breast cancer. And today on the program we have a very special guest and she's a doctor and a miso expert, Dr. Yuka Seki. Thank you so much for your time today. Nice to see you. And Dr. Seki is here to give us some really, show us some really simple and delicious miso soup recipes. According to an old Japanese saying, miso keeps sickness away and it's a superfood. It's rich in minerals, vitamins and antioxidants. So it's a perfect choice for cancer-fighting recipes. Today, Seki will show us how to make miso soup with nutritious ingredients that are easily available in many countries. First, I'll make miso soup with avocado. So how do we make it? First, bring the vegetable stock to a boil and turn off the heat. Add the miso by dissolving it in the hot broth. Cut the avocado in half and scoop out the flesh with a spoon. You don't need a knife, so you can make it for breakfast without fuss. And that's it. Mm. You can make it in one minute, yes. two minutes, or even... That's all. That's it. Wow. Please try. It's really delicious. Thank you. And it's such an unusual combination. It's, um, mm. And it has that really the creaminess of the avocado. Yes, a perfect match. Avocados are rich in unsaturated fatty acids, so they can help lower cholesterol. A study by Japan's National Cancer Center says that two bowls of miso soup a day can lower the incidence of breast cancer by 26%. It's amazing. It's For the next dish, I'll use red miso with tomatoes and bell peppers. Bring the soup stock to a boil, add sautéed tomato and bell peppers that have been slightly cooked through. Turn off the heat and add the miso. Tomatoes go well with the rich flavor of red miso, so I recommend it for this dish. I like to sprinkle parsley on top. And it's completely, it's like an Italian miso soup. I have a little taste. Itadakimasu. You've really got the flavor here of the miso coming through, but especially the tomatoes. And it tastes, the combination, especially of the tomatoes and the red, the red miso is delicious. That's great. Vegetables that contain beta-carotene, such as tomatoes and bell peppers, are high in antioxidants. So they're a good complement to miso for disease prevention. Next, we'll make a miso soup packed with different ingredients. For example, salmon, broccoli, and mushrooms that are comparatively easy to find. It's easy to make. And what's this here? It's soy milk. Okay, great. So how do we make it? First, heat the olive oil slightly. Add the onion and mushrooms and saute them. So then we put in the broth after with... I mean, basically, this is really a full meal. I mean, you have protein, carbohydrate. Mm. Right. Now add miso. And finally, but it's amazing. It's from here. It smells like a cheese fondue, a miso cheese fondue. Mm -hmm. My gosh, it smells amazing. And it has this beautiful umami flavor also mm. coming from the salmon. Yes. Mm. I would never have thought it was miso. So delicious and so creamy. Mm. And it's such a simple thing to make for a dinner or lunch or even a nice dinner party as well. Mm. 
So now what are we going to make? We're going to make a homemade miso paste. All you need is three ingredients. But this is not soybeans, this is chickpeas. Many people are allergic to soybeans these days, but we can make miso with chickpeas or azuki beans instead of soy. It's simple. I'll show you how. Okay, so chickpeas, and what's this? It's koji, rice fermented with koji mold. First, mix the koji mold and salt. So where can we buy koji overseas? Is it possible to buy on, for example? Dried koji is available at Japanese supermarkets abroad. The salt and koji should be mixed really well. Then, mix in the chickpeas, boiled beforehand, and mashed. Now put the mixture into a glass container like this. Make sure you press down firmly so no air gets in. If air gets inside, it could easily become moldy. This is really important. How long then do you need for it to start fermenting? It takes 10 months. Lastly, cover the surface with plastic wrap to make sure the mixture doesn't come into contact with oxygen. And then put the lid on. Keep the container out of direct sunlight, for example, in a cupboard, for 10 months. Check it from time to time and say hello to encourage good fermentation. It will make the finished miso tasty. Because essentially it's a living food, isn't it? Gosh, that's so easy. Yes, that's all. This is chickpea miso I made last year. So that is just 10 months of fermentation that the color will change. The color is from melanoidins, which are a powerful oxidation inhibitor. The miso is packed with nutrients. It has an amazing umami that I didn't think that chickpea would have. It has a natural sweetness, mm. but it also has still that really, really lovely, delicious umami flavor. Mm. Miso soup warms up your body and improves your gut flora. I recommend eating it every day. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you.